So hopefully by now I have convinced you about coming to Austria, but obviously there would have a, a reason that makes sense to you. But hopefully I have done that. What do you need to do in order to set up company here? Remember we talked about English being the only thing you need to actually do your business? Uh, it's not the case when you want to set up a company because every single document you need to sign is in German. And uh, it was hard for us. We had to get a lawyer. And, um, and also a lot of processes. As you walk through, you have to get, uh, get it notarized. You have to have a notary public present at the scene when you sign certain document. And one thing I want to mention for early startups, you experience your first chicken and egg problem. In order for you to establish a company, uh, you need to have a bank account for the company. And any company would need a managing director. Managing director have to be resident. In order for you to apply for resident, you need to prove funding in the first place. But without a company, you would be very hard um, to, for you to open a bank account. So like there will be three and four chicken egg like that throughout the course, but we resolved it by um, basically have someone local um, to be the temporary managing director while we're getting the company set up, uh, funds in place, my residents sort it out, and then the company could get going. So I want to summarize, summarize the first bit. As you start up a company, we highly recommend you get a lawyer. Even local businesses would use a lawyer to set up a company. It is kind of difficult when you try to set up all by yourself. So in most of the cases, uh, the company has to, um, the, the company format would be GmbH. Um, if you're from an Anglo-Saxon country, uh, this is very similar to a limited liability company. Um, and most of the startup it does end, uh, end up with uh, being GmbH. Um, if, as I mentioned before, if you're a managing director, you have to be resident. So we'll talk about how to become a resident and how to apply that in the visa section. But for some of you may even just thinking to set up a, a proxy office here in Vienna, I'm just letting you guys know that the major shareholder does not have to reside here and doesn't have to be resident. All right, so, um, and what does it mean to be a major shareholder? Usually the, um, it's about over 25.1%. So if you're over 25.1%, you'll be a major shareholder. Um, and when you live here, um, anything less than that, you're considered employees, you're supposed to pay yourself, you're supposed to pay social insurance and taxes. So very quickly about ourselves, we got a, a lawyer to help us out. Our cap table is really simple, so there's no trickiness there, but it may not be the case uh, for you. Um, the company setup took pretty fast. One thing interesting though is that we pretty much have our starting capital locked up in the bank, um, cannot use it for the business operation until not only the company is founded, but also my visa or well, the residency is all done. I think for a lot of you, if you decided to be residing here uh, as the major shareholder, that would be the case for you as well. So be prepared that you need to set aside the uh, starting capital, um, which we'll um, mention the amount later. Now let's talk about tax. I don't think we'll drill into the details, into the actual bookkeeping and accounting, but the general guideline of tax um, with you guys. Coming from New Zealand or any of those um, English-speaking countries, I would say company tax, capital gain tax, and, um, and VAT are actually very standard. No big surprises there. The biggest surprise by far to us is personal tax. And, and to us is actually how much startup are expected to, to actually fulfill that role as much as any other businesses. A general guideline, I mean, there is a formula for it, I think uh, through our Q&A session, uh, we can give you the link, but the general guideline is whatever it costs for the company, for every single employee you have, almost close to 50% of it would go to social insurance and tax. And this is considerably um, quite high compared to what you and I may be uh, comfortable, uh, may, may be used to of, right? Um, but as managing director, 
um, the most pragmatical way. Um, lucky enough, uh, as managing director, you do not have to pay yourself. You do not have to get a salary, but there will be some requirement um, if you are bringing your families, your spouse and children in here in terms of the social insurance payment. And our suggestion would just be like about the company setup. We got an accountant that basically does our general bookkeeping. The accounting practice is a very standard as the most developed uh, countries worldwide. Um, but it's very common for every, even local startups, to get a, to outsource accountant, outsource bookkeeping to a third party form. Um, and yeah, um, this is what we also recommend to you guys as well. So this is the tax section. As I said, my CFO has a lot more knowledge than me regarding to tax. So he will be available with our Q&A sessions. Make sure to dig deeper if you have more questions regarding to the company setup and tax. And next, we'll be moving on to the one of most interesting bit, visas.